Okay, this is Ray J2 here with my third pony related review. This time we've got the season three episode, Too Many Pinkie Pies. This turned out to be my favorite episode of season three for a variety of reasons. Number one being that I had so much fun watching this for the first time. And Pinkie's all about having fun, right? Let's get on with the review and see what else made this episode so great. The episode begins with Twilight trying to turn an apple into an orange. I'll bet Applejack wouldn't be too pleased about that. But it's just not working. When suddenly, Pinky just busts in out of nowhere just to give her a hug. Why? Because hugs are funnerific, apparently. I've been blindsided by a hug like this before, so I know it's kind of fun, although I would choose to use a different adjective. So anyway, Rarity is walking through for some reason, and before moving on, I have to point out how Rarity looks like a dark Sith Lord in this outfit. It turns out she's just hiding under another one of her fabulous outfits. I mean, look at this thing. Rarity is easily one of the best ponies just because of her fabulous sense of style. And if you don't have style, then what do you have? Rarity mentions how much fun she had designing her dress, and Pinky freaks out because she just can't stand the fact that someone else had such amazing fun without her, so it's off to meet as many friends as possible, just so she won't miss out on any more fun. Turns out, having fun is a lot harder than she expected. Pinky decides to take a break in Fluttershy's butterfly garden, but it doesn't last for long. Rainbow Dash and Applejack come over and ask if Pinky would like to hang out for a while. Rainbow wants to chill by the lake while AJ needs help for a barn raising. Unfortunately, these events take place at the same time and Pinky just can't be in two places at once. Even though she tries, believe me, she tries. If it were up to me, I'd choose the lake. Raising a barn just doesn't seem very fun at all, unless maybe you're Amish or something. I also think it's funny that nobody asks Fluttershy if she'd like to partake in these activities, but I guess not having fun is what Fluttershy is all about. After realizing that maybe rushing back and forth between events isn't the best idea, she remembers the legend of the mirror pool. So it's off to the Everfree Forest where she literally stumbles onto the pool of legend. Stepping into the mystical waters, the fun has just been doubled. Two Pinkie Pies? Yeah, I can't see anything bad coming out of this. So anyway, Pinky's foolproof plan involves her clone going to the barn raising while she goes to the lake, then later on meeting back up to tell her about everything that happened as if she were actually there. Which doesn't really make sense if you think about it. I mean, if you're not really there and you're receiving secondhand information about what went on, well, that doesn't sound like it would be nearly as fun as actually being there. Oh well. So the plan goes into action. The real Pinky joins Rainbow at the pool and the clone heads to the barn, but gets stopped by Fluttershy, who's having a picnic with some of her animal friends, including a massive bear. Oh no, now the cloned Pinky has the same problem the original had. Two events, only enough time for one. This is what happens when you're indecisive. You go crazy. Back at the pool, Pinky explains the whole clone thing and how she's now able to be at two places at once. Rainbow doesn't believe any of this and decides to take a nap. Pinky decides to meet back up with her clone, who seems to be even more distressed than the original at the beginning of the episode. The solution? More clones, of course! You can never have enough clones and... Okay, maybe you can and this is it. You thought the Paris Sprite invasion was bad? Ponyville's gonna be wishing for Parasprites once they see the onslaught of Pinky coming their way. Rainbow is the first victim of the Pinky Swarm. The real Pinky sees this and decides that maybe now is not the best time to go swimming. So she heads over to the barn raising where things are just as bad. Instead of raising the barn, they've completely destroyed it. Applejack is furious, you can tell because she throws her hat to the ground. Farmers always throw their hat down when they're angry, don't you know this? I guess to be honest, raising a barn is more fun than raising it, get it? Ha ha ha. At least we can see that Pinky is genuinely upset at, um, upsetting her friends. How to find a way to somehow fix this mess. Back in Ponyville, the townspeople are angry at the events that are transpiring, so Twilight is forced to find a way to fix it. She finds a book in her library that gives her a spell that will send the clones back to the pool. The catch? There is a possibility that she could send the real Pinky back by mistake, so it's off to find the real one in a swarm of fakes. 
Hey, Twilight, don't you think the real Pinky would be the one depressed at the chaos she's created? No? Well, screw you, Twilight, because this is obviously the real one right here. At least Spike knows what's up. Before moving on, Pinky, that is, the real Pinky, gives Twilight a suggestion. Give all the ponies something incredibly boring to do. Whoever wants to stay the most, that must be the real one. Sounds like a plan that could work, but also something that could have a high chance of failure. What they should have done was quiz each Pinky on the names of their friends. Earlier in the episode, we see that the clones have trouble getting every pony's name right. Twilight could have just written up a test for all the Pinkies to take, but oh well, that wouldn't have been as exciting to watch, I guess. So Applejack and her crew round up all the clones to the auditorium for some good old-fashioned non-fun, in this case, watching paint dry. But before they can begin, Rainbow brings in another Pinky that they missed, the same depressed one from earlier, and still, nobody can tell that this is obviously the real one. Is this what they call dramatic irony? The test begins and every Pinky goes into extreme focus mode. Eventually, one of them is distracted by a bird outside the window and is zapped back into the mirror pool. Lots of great sight gags and jokes follow until it's down to just two. Eventually, Rainbow thinks enough is enough and distracts the final Pinky. When I first saw this, I could have sworn they accidentally sent the wrong Pinky back by mistake. I mean, the one to go was the sad-looking one in the front, and the real Pinky had been sad up until this point, so I thought my logic was solid. It's wrong, though. The real Pinky came in late, so it makes sense that she would be seated near the back. Also, the look of determination is strong with this one, seeing as how the real Pinky has the most to lose. Her friends, her job, parties... The clone has only been here for less than a day, most of which has probably been spent staring at a wall. I'd be depressed too if I knew I had to go back to the mirror pool. There's probably not much fun there. So the episode ends with Pinky reuniting with her friends. She writes a letter about what she's learned. The entrance to the mirror pool is blocked off and Pinky falls asleep, exhausted from the day's events. So, final thoughts. This episode was awesome. The premise was awesome. Clone episodes are not unique, but they are fun to watch. The animation was really good with sight gags everywhere. You can focus on pretty much each individual Pinky and see them all doing different things. The jokes were funny, I liked Fluttershy's enjoyment of not having fun, and the clones getting the ponies' names wrong. I loved Rainbow Dash defending herself with an umbrella and an overturned beach chair as cover, and Applejack throwing her hat down and yelling at the clones to come back and fix this mess. I could probably watch this a few more times and not get tired of it. And like I said at the beginning of this video, this is the episode I had the most fun watching this season, so it's my favorite. Tune in next week, where I'll be reviewing the next episode of Season 3, One Bad Apple. I'll see you next time.